Art and manga go together like an anime girl running with toast in her mouth. And it is a make or break process for a series. If your art is not good, no matter how good your story is, no matter how intricate your characters are, if you do not have good art, nobody is going to want to read it. And in today's video, we are going to give an ode to the series that do the best in art. Bring the best out and put the most into the art to bring you a series that is on another level. And without further ado, let's get right into the top 10 best art in manga. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel that I've deserved it. I always appreciate your guys' support, and it lets me know that what I'm doing is right, and it lets me know that this type of content is something you guys want to see more of. So if you feel that this video deserves it and you want to see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, guys, have fun in the rest of the video. I wonder who wins. Before we get into this, I want to tell you guys how I picked these and what my main rules were for these. Basically, it's just how well the art was, how well it worked with these series, and it's just overall likability and how well it was done. Now, the story wasn't really a focus for it, but if you look at all these series, all of them have a really, really great story in itself, and how the art relates to the story is also a very important factor to why I picked these series, because if you have this fantastic art, but it doesn't fit the mood of the series, it kind of actually ruins and pulls away from the story. So I wanted to have stuff that first themed well with it, and not only was absolutely fantastic, but now let's get in to the actual countdown. Disclaimer, all these series in here will have spoilers in them to a degree. I will try to keep it to a minimum, but I can't promise not spoiling a little bit just to showcase some of the best art in it. So when these series pop up, and if you do not want to see it, I will put a timestamp at the beginning of it so you can skip to that time and not have to worry about spoilers and having that series ruined for you. But with anyway, thank you guys and enjoy the video. So let's start off with the honorable mentions. Now these series did not make the list because honestly the stuff on the list was just had better art and they were more well received and they just worked better. I think you can make a case for some of them but a lot of them were just kind of my personal opinion. So let's start off with Dimension W by Yuji Iwahara. Now this series follows Manji and Mira who go through a world that basically has discovered a new energy source called Dimension W. And along this way, Mira is a robot made by the actual inventor of this Dimension W energy. And she has a purpose that she doesn't really know. And basically, Manji and Mira team up and they go to try to figure out what her purpose was through collecting coils, these illegal coils, and following different rabbit trails to try to figure out what her purpose is. Now, the art itself in here is so fantastic. And he is honestly one of my favorite manga artists ever for storytelling because I love sci-fi and the art that goes within these series match perfectly with what he's trying to do. I really love the darker kind of sketchy kind of look that he gives a lot of his stuff. It really works well and his monsters that he draws throughout of it and the giant mechas and not mechas gi this giant robot that shows up in one of the later volumes or one of the middle volumes for it is just absolutely fantastic. I love it so much but I just felt like these other series were better at the end of the day with their art. I think this has can make a case for how great it is and how underrated he is as an artist. But for that reason, because I, just because I think the other ones were better, I couldn't put it on the list. And we're going to get on to our next honorable mention. For our next honorable mention, we have Grand Blue Dreaming. And this story follows Iori, who has been in all guys high school for his entire life and he's done that growing up and he graduates and decides to go to a seaside college to be able to discover new things about life and discover himself and all this other stuff and just get out and be able to experience new things. So he moves in with his uncle who owns a scuba shop. And this ends up leading to the rest of the story with Iori joining the college scuba club and the antics that he gets into. Now this is a slice of life comedy that is absolutely amazing and if it's more than just an etchy. There's a lot of etchy moments in here, I'm not gonna lie. But at the end of the day, this is just a coming of age story of Iori discovering himself and finding his love and of new things, discovering new things, just learning who he is, and it's one of the best series that I've ever read, honestly, in anime and manga. There's so much more to it than what you expect for this kind of a comedy, but the art itself works so well with this series, and obviously with the comedy and slice of life, you wouldn't expect something to be absolutely blowing you away, 
what it does. The art itself is absolutely fantastic. It is so well done, and honestly, the faces in this, oh my god. Some of the, like, the funny faces that they put in this are just absolutely amazing. It is so well done, and you might be seeing, like, man... This isn't, like, that great of art or whatever. It's just, like, a really detailed face or, like, it's, like, okay or whatever. But, I mean, until you get and see the ocean parts of this, when you see where he first goes to the aquarium, where he first goes under the ocean, some of the best underwater art I've ever seen is there. It's so well done. It's so good. And I cannot praise this series enough. Not only for its story, but for its art and its characters. Everything about this, this series does right, but... Like I did for this last one, the art in the other series on the top 10 are just better, and that is why it is not on there. For our last honorable mention, we have Noragami by Ajitoka. Now, this is my personal favorite manga series of all time, and I think the art is absolutely amazing. I think that it does everything right. It sets up the perfect world. I think the characters are all drawn extremely unique. I think the art of these like different mystical beasts that ends up showing up the Adi, the ayakashi I, I think they're ayakashi in here i know they do it for a lot of other series but i believe they're also called ayakashi here but basically the bad spirits within the world are really unique and really well drawn the battles in here are so well done like the choreography of it not only the choreography of it but the actual fight itself and how it's drawn with some of the over-the-top action that goes on in that it's just Everything this series does right to a perfect degree. I just think that other people wouldn't like me putting it on this list because they're like, there are other series that are better. But for me personally, I do think it should be on this top 10 list. And it's a little bit biased. And that's also kind of why I didn't do it because I want to be like putting my biased opinion into it too much. Because honestly, like I said earlier, it is my favorite series of all time. And I think it does so much stuff right. And the art is one of the things that it does so well that. I just thought if I put it on here, I'm just putting my personal opinion on rather than objectivity, even though I do think that it does deserve to be on here. So let's get on to our top 10 list now, and I cannot wait to share these with you guys. We got some big ones, and we got some good things going on. So let's get on to the list. Okay, everyone, for number 10, we have Tagami Baki by Hiroyuki Asada. Now, this story follows Lag Seeing, who is a letter B and the Amaground is humanity's last stronghold. It is an area where there is an artificial light that keeps it lit. And where there is not any light and where this artificial sun does not keep the area lit, there are monsters that roam the night. And so there are letter bees that have to deliver letters and basically, like the mail system, have to take it from within the city to all the way to the outskirts of the city where it is most dangerous and all along the way battling these monsters now the art itself is absolutely amazing you're gonna hear me say amazing obviously it's in the top 10 so i hope i think it's amazing it's not gonna really make a lot of sense if i'm like oh yeah it's so great i can't <laughs> i love it so much when it's not even that good but for this fantasy series i think it is one of the most underrated series out there for a shonen jumps title i rarely see anybody talk about this the art itself is so amazing lag and all the other characters within this are all unique and have their own little n n niches have their own little knacks and all this kind of things that make them v look very unique and all their stuff is so good the world itself is absolutely drawn amazingly it comes in such a vivid way and is drawn so well and clear that you can really feel how this city is and it really looks and feels like a real city that would be in this kind of scenario the magical beasts that are throughout this are also really well drawn the magic that is kind of in here magic i would say is just kind of the equivalent of the, like their powers are and how they use it and the battles that end up going on within this series is absolutely amazing story aside there are so many good things that the series does right within the art is so clear there's rarely any scenes where you're like i don't really go know what's going on or like the wonky scene where you're like this character does not look right in any way it is top tier throughout the entire time there's this one scene i still remember it's when one of the characters get introduced and she's playing a violin and it's just so well done i love it so much there's so much the series does right and the art is one of the reasons that has to be on this list. And honestly, it is one of the most underrated series out there. And if you've never read Tagami Baki, you need to read this series. I mean, story-wise alone, it is one of the best stories I've ever read in a Shonen Jump title. It is 
so unique. The battle aspect that it pulls in is not everything. The story is what it's all about, and the ending is so perfect for this series. And when you learn about the true meaning behind the Amber Ground, what Lag's whole process is in there, and the art that brings the whole series to life and brings every scene to another level, it is without a doubt an amazing series, and it deserves to be number 10. And without further ado, let's hop on to number 9. For number 9, we have The Promised Neverland by Pokusa Dimizu. Now, this story follows Emma, Ray, and Norman, who all belong to the Gracefield House Orphanage. And as we find out later in Chapter 1, is that the world is actually controlled by demons, and that the people within the Gracefield House are all going to be eaten at the maximum of the age of 12. So now this ends up spiking the rest of the series where Emma, Ray, and Norman try to escape from the orphanage along with all the other people that are within the orphanage with them and they are trying to just escape from the demon world and go somewhere that is safe and free from demons. Now the art by Posuka is absolutely top tier. He does such a great job at bringing out the horror in this series from how the demons look to how even the original characters are sketched with Emma, Ray, and Norman all looking very unique, but the actual art style that he has is what brings it out so perfectly because nothing that he does is ever coming out super straight with line art. There's always a messiness to it. There's always a very sketch look to it, especially when you see something like his actual sketches of the series rather than when you get into the actual series itself where it is very it is cleaned up but in the same time it's never really a clean cut line there's never really a straight line and it never really purposely completes itself there's always a sketchiness to it and it adds so much to the ambiance and to the atmosphere of this series that brings it out so so well there's so much that brings this horror and thriller aspect to the uh, how he uses different camera angles of saying quotations because it's obviously a manga so you have to pick it but basically how they do their shots how they do the horror scenes how they add the intensity of each scene how he draws these scenes to come out and make them come to life and you could feel the intensity the stress how they're feeling how emma's feeling how ray or norman or how one of these characters are feeling at that time when something crazy happens how it builds up this intense look to it and even when you get into the spoiler alert if you have this but i think i put a disclaimer at the beginning i just said it again just in case but basically once you get into the outer world of the gracefield house and you get to see the rest of it when you get to see things like goldie pond or when you get to see what the other houses look like and what the other farms are like everything in this series is drawn so well and it makes the world feel so real and not only that it comes to life it's just so well done and you could feel the horror and all the crazy stuff that's going on with this world when you get to see the rogue monsters that are coming in everything that is drawn in the series is so well done so unique and fits the world perfectly and encapsulates this atmosphere and what is going for to a t now i do not know how this ends because i have been reading the manga volumes so i don't know how it actually ends in the shonen jump stuff waiting for it to come out i believe i'm volume 14 so there's like six volumes left before we get to see the end of it i love this series besides the art the story itself is what you come for it is on a top tier level that is just so good for a shonen jump series not only is it unique but it's so engaging and so entertaining throughout the entire series there's so much that the series does right in art in story in characters and everything but the art itself blows you away and it is such a top tier series and for a new shonen jump series ending it's really sad to see it go but you have to love the art and for what it's done without further ado let's get on to number eight for number eight we have golden kamoi by Sadaro noda now this story follows sugimoto and a shirpa who go on a journey to try to find a bunch of skins that have the map to find gold on it throughout an 1800 century Japan era, I believe after it's the Russo-Japanese War, it is after the Russo-Japanese War, and basically the story follows, like I said, them trying to find the gold for different reasons, a Shirpa is looking for her father, and Sugimoto is looking to get it because there is something and a promise that he made to somebody for why he has to get it and why he needs this gold. Now, the art of this series is absolutely top tier. I mean, if we're gonna talk about best boys right here, some sexy ass men, I mean, we gotta talk about Golden Kamoy, because my god, do they like to have their scenes with sexy men. He really likes drawing them, really detailed and really chiseled, but damn, 
Are they, is it, if anything's gonna make me question my sexuality, it's gonna be Golden Kamoy. Now, not only is like the scenes like that very fantastic and very well done, we also have pro my favorite part of it, and in my opinion, the best drawn sections of the entire manga, and that is the nature scenes. Throughout all these nature scenes, when they blow up and they have these big two-page panels and stuff like this, when you see it, your mind gets blown every time because it's so insanely detailed and drawn so realistically and such a well realistic environment that it really feels like you're actually in nature. Maybe maybe that's a bit of a exaggeration, but for me personally, like when you see the nature, my god, does it feel real? Or maybe when you get another scene when a man is com <laughs> committing bestiality with uh, a bear and it's probably <laughs> It's one of the best scenes. I, I mean one of the most well-drawn scenes I've ever ever witnessed and I hate to admit it But damn is it drawn really really well and not only are the nature scenes and these kind of Super sexy men moments and throughout the entire thing all top tier when you get to see the fight scenes They're so well choreographed and drawn that you can follow along so clearly you can see the entire thing You can imagine in your mind how it's playing out what's going on around you You could realize where people are with throughout the environment and it's drawn drawn very well and in a way that feels like it's actually happening around you you can also know where people are kind of get a layout of the environment because it's drawn so well and that is golden kamoi by Tsaru noda so without further ado let's get on to number seven for number seven we have one piece by ichiro oda now everybody knows about one piece let's be honest here it is the best-selling manga series of all time and that's for a reason not only for its art but for its story this is one of the most expansive ever extending worlds that has ever been created over 1000 chapters or close to 1000 chapters at the very least i don't remember the exact number but i believe it's like in the, at least the upper 900s but this story itself from the start has a fantastic art style then as it goes on it just gets better and better whether you're looking at the monsters that are within the grand line whether you're in the east blue and you're looking at arlong park and all the monsters that are in there and the actual fight that goes on with arlong park whether you're getting to the end of east blue when you're meeting sanji and all on, on that ship whether you're going into all these different worlds that are going into there are so many different people and characters that have their own unique not only world but presence and feeling and uniqueness and you can tell just by the way they're dressed how their facial expressions are there's just over the top demeanor o Oda Sensei knows what he's doing there's a reason this is almost almost at 1000 chapters from the start to what it is now I know a lot of people say that it isn't as good as it was back in the day when you had the Ennis Lo Ennis Lobby then you had what's the other one before that I was thinking of Alabasta arc which is one of my favorite arcs of all time and all these other arcs that are going on within it, it just hasn't stacked up to the end, but the art it has. The art has been absolutely amazing. Everything that Ichiro Oda does is top tier. He does so much right from his amazing fights to when he sh first shows the pistol, the gum gun pistol, to when he shows new ships and new crazy characters, even though I hate Silver Fox. One of my least favorite arcs in manga of all time. I absolutely hate the Silver Foxy arc. It is one of the most annoying stupid things i've ever seen in anime and i fucking hate it bro like i mean come on he goes in there and luffy's stupid enough to not only accept the bet one time but twice who does that it's not it wasn't funny the first time it was annoying the first time and then he does it again and you're like oh my god really like come on it was not good but this story and the art stay solid all the time and one of my favorite scenes and this is going to be something a little bit contrasting in this video when i talk about how great art is and how amazing art is all this time i'm going to bring up a scene that is not the most well drawn not in the sense that it's not drawn well but there is a lot going on with it but the thing is with a scene and with a manga panel or with anything in a media entertainment wise it doesn't have to be the most grand, out of this world, next level drawn art or anything like that. All it has to do is be memorable. And one of the most memorable scenes for me for all of manga is the Vivian scene in the end of the Alabaster arc when you have the five crew members floating away and what do they do? They hold up their X's that they put on you. And as you can see in this, all it is is the characters. There's no background, it's just the characters holding up their X's on their arm. And the thing that makes this so beautiful is that 
it knows what it's supposed to do right. It knows what it's supposed to focus on. It doesn't need a background. All it is supposed to be is the One Piece crew and Vivian as they're sailing away because that's all they care about. Nothing in this world matters at that moment except for these two paths finally separating. Just like at the end of the Fast and Furious series when you have Paul Walker and Vin Diesel driving away. Whoa! As they separate. And that's all you feel and that's all you care about. And anytime I think of manga, and especially within the One Piece universe, I always think of this panel because it's so memorable. It wraps up the series and not the series, the art so well and so nicely. It ends perfectly and it continues the adventure. I wish Vibia would have been on the crew. It makes sense that she's not, but it's a fantastic series, fantastic art, some of the most memorable arts. And, I, and I'm sure that you guys have your own pictures or manga panels that are in your mind when you think of One Piece because there's so many memorable moments for different people that is one of the best parts about One Piece is everyone has their own favorite scene. Everybody has their own favorite part. We all love One Piece and for the grand world that Ichiro Oda has made and he has drawn it to another level between his world building, how he does perspectives, his grand scale of this entire universe is top tier in every way. And that is One Piece. For number six, we have Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Now, I had to go and listen to some Call of Duty Zombies music, you know, gotta get myself in the horror mood, some of the more scary heavy metal stuff, because this series is on another level for horror. Now, in a sense, I don't find it scary because I don't think manga really does horror too well, and it really doesn't portray a sense of horror in the best light. I think it can do very creepy and tense and more thriller kind of things, which is what I see this as. It's like a thriller with horror elements within it because Overall, this series is absolutely fantastic, top tier on every level for the story-wise aspects of it, but as you guys know, Junji Ito is known for his horror manga. He is known for his horror manga art and the crazy things that go within it. And there were two series that I was going to pick from for this, and one was Geo, and the other one was Uzumaki, and I was kind of torn between which one I wanted to do because Geo has so many cool different crazy fish creatures that show up and is drawn so well, but I had to end up giving it to the Spiral Obsessioned manga. Uzumaki because man did this blow me away when I first read, read it my god was everything in here insane there's so many different crazy horror things that go on here that are drawn so well and depicted so crazy like when the girl's father Uzumaki's father ends up getting into his spiral or when you get to see the two couples go into the ocean together as they spiral together so many crazy things that end up going on and are drawn so well and depicted so well especially when you get towards the end of it and then you get to see the whole town and how that turns into a spiral and when you end up finally getting to see the last part of the actual story and then you get to see this underground area the labyrinth that they're in and how when uzumaki finally gives up i'm sorry if i'm saying her name wrong it's i swear to god her name's uzumaki after looking it up and realizing that I was wrong about another thing yet again, her name is Kiri, so I'm sorry about that. But anyway, now that I fixed that, the art itself in this manga blows me away for its horror. Now, there has not been any horror manga that has ever been able to stack up to how well his art is. And the, my biggest thing with Junji Ito was I didn't really like his stories because I read things like Frankenstein's Dissolving Classroom, which were absolutely terrible. But... When I finally got to Uzumaki, when I got to Geo, and even a little bit of Tomi, I thought Tomi was okay for the most part. It's definitely the weakest out of those three, but Uzumaki was on another level for the story. I loved it so much. It kept me engaged from the beginning to the end. It was so good. I know this is about art, but I really wanted to talk about that because that was my biggest problem with Juji Ito. His art was out of this world every time, and I really, really wanted to like his art. I really did, and then it finally had a good story, and I was like, I'm all in. Uzumaki is the best Junji Ito title without a doubt get it if you haven't it. its art is on another level it is the closest thing to a scary manga that i've ever read and is done so fantastically well drawn through amazingly throughout this entire story and is engaging and is amazing in every single way so that is uzumaki at number six so let's get on to number five for number five we have dead dead demons ddd's destruction by inio sanu or really any any Asano work for his art alone because my god is he on another level of drawing and the only reason I didn't put good nine poon poon on here is because I have not actually read it so I didn't want to put it on here and actually spoil myself for the biggest point but also because I haven't read it so I can't really speak to how great or how bad it actually is now 
Dead Dead Demons is also probably the biggest reason I included it because my god is that spaceship and the robots that are drawn throughout this entire thing on another level my god are they so well done and so cool and even the aliens themselves look absolutely amazing there's so much fantastic and unique art on this and the characters themselves are so crazy and so wacky and fit their style so well and these high school girls that are going are college girls now that are going through their life and it's just into the world and, and after people get used to an alien invasion after like three years that these aliens have been here and all this and the alien extermination squad that goes on that extinguishes them and all the fantastic art that comes on and the overall hint of an apocalypse that's coming on in this manga there's so much that Ennio Sano draws right. There's so many good, fantastic scenes that are drawn so well in every single way. So clearly, so beautifully. Every character's emotion, even the more serious parts and the more crazy parts that go on throughout this manga are all clear and all amazing in every single way. Ennio Sano has been known for his drawing and how good his art is and there's a reason for that and this manga is no exception it brings out the best of Ennio Sano both story wise and art wise there's so much that this manga does well and it is such a fantastic series you guys have to check it out if you haven't if you've never read an Ennio Sano work because you're kind of scared of how depressing and crazy it is this is probably one of his more middle of the ground series there is a kind of depressing overtone in it that is not a dark series it definitely is not dark in any way but the kind of looming overall threat that is going on and what the future actually holds in it. Once you see what it is in there, you will get what I mean by that. In the kind of depressing atmosphere that it sets and the inevitability of this kind of future event. But my god, is it a fantastic series and I cannot wait to see where this goes. But that is Dead Dead Demons, DDD's Destruction. And let's get on to number four. For number four, we have Berserk by Kentaro Miura. Now, this story is drawn amazingly. I love the art in this series. This medieval setting that it takes place in fits so well with the knights and how they're dressed and when you get to meet the band of hawks and when you get to eventually get closer to the Eclipse arc, well, which I will not be talking about anything past that because I don't even know what goes on past that. I'm reading the deluxe editions as of the moment. And my god, is reading it in a big format absolutely amazing. I have never been pulled into a series series as well as this one when you open this big giant book you think it's gonna be bulky and just really gonna pull you out of the story but, but my god do these big pages seem like they have arms that reach out to you and just pull you into this manga forcibly you are in these scenes like when there's a giant battle going on and there's a giant fight going on when you first meet the demons when you see where guts is born and when you get to see how he has to deal with his life and the crazy people that are involved in that this is series is done so well and the theme so well with how it is and for the love of everything is Casca waifu as my fucking god i have not seen anyone more waifu than her my god Casca is top tier in every way i am so sad to what seems to be happening in the story i'm scared to see what's going to go on and i am really really terrified what's going to happen to Casca and guts because my god i just want them to be together i want them to be happy and i hope it ends up in a better way than i think it's going to but i'm telling you right now it's not gonna do that but the art itself is so good, like I was saying, with these giant landscapes and the battles that take place within them. The characters and the fights themselves are so gory, but so well done. It is so intense, every scene, even the horse scene, and everything about it is so top tier, and it has to be Berserk at number four. So, without further ado, we're going to get on to number three. We finally reached our top three. Now, this is going to be where I receive a lot of hate. I actually don't think I will because I think I'm very fair because Berserk may not got into it because I'm pretty sure that's what most people are going to be mad about and be like, why is it number one? He was like, because it doesn't deserve to be number one. Sorry to say it. There are just better manga artists out there. Not to say that Berserk isn't one of the best series of all time, but are some of these artists insane? And we're judging the art. And that's the main premise of this, not the overall story. So, with that out of the way, we're going to get into number three, and that is Rakia by Bochi. Now, the reason I pick Rakia by Bochi is because I believe this is his best drawn series. Now, you have Sun Kin Rock, and you also have Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone is not even in the top ten, let's be honest. I mean, it's good, and it's drawn well, but... It's not in anywhere better than any of the series that have already been on here, but it, Rakia is on another level of every single one of these series that are below it. When you get to see the end of the world stuff, when you get to see the crosses across the sky, how he shows the world, even the shower scene, like, is it drawn so fucking well that you don't even care that the girl's naked? You're just like, man, this is actually art right here. I don't even give a fuck that she's naked, and it doesn't matter at all because you're not even thinking about that. The art is so good. The story is entertaining throughout the thing. I always think of Bochi's series when he does a solo thing, 
as very Fast and Furious-like because they are high-octane as hell. There's action and crazy things going on throughout the entire thing. But man, does the story sometimes lack in a few different places. Like in Rakia, towards the end, it feels very rushed and some of the stuff that happens and there's this time skip and it just ends and you're like very, very confused. But is the art top tier throughout the entire thing and you tend to not even think about it? Because, man, when you get to towards the end of it and you get to see her meet the actual demon and, like, the realization of it, the scene of her angelically flying up towards her is absolutely insane. This, this art is so intense at, through and through. When you first see the truck go through the house, like, my god, even when she starts to get all these tattoos, you're like, oh, man, tattoo girl. Now that's top tier but is the art in every single way some of the best you've ever seen is some of the most consistent well-drawn art bochi knows what he's doing and he's fantastic at what he does this series if the art alone is reason to put it on here and is the reason it's made it so high up because there are so many good scenes that go on within this there's so much awesomeness in this series the scenes blow you away every single time like even when the spot not the spies but when the anti-group shows up and i don't want to get into that just suppose if you ever want to read it but when that group shows up is the action scenes in there crazy or when we find out who one of these guys are and he actually ends up going back into a place and you just see this beam of light and i'm being general on purpose again I, i'm trying not to spoil too much for you guys so you guys have something to look forward to if you ever end up checking these out but Damn, is it fucking amazing. You have to read this. It's so good in every single way. But without further ado, we're getting on to our top two. For number two, we have Vinland Saga by Makoto Yukimura. Now, if you guys have seen this series, and how have you not seen this series and the art that is within this series, this Viking saga, the best thing you've ever seen, is one of the best well-written stories even though within the first arc, and I get shit for this every time I say it, I thought it was overrated because I wasn't super into Thor Finn, and his whole character was very one-sided. I'm not going to change my stance. I thought it was a bit overrated. I think Aslag was the thing that made that entire first half what it was, and now that the second half has finally come around, I think it is on another level for the story. I like where Thor Finn's character is going. I think he's one of the most interesting characters in all of manga now, and it may have took some time to get there, but we got there, and is it top tier in every single way? Now, now, Vinland Saga, the Vikings that are in here are the Vikings and like the ships, the characters. It's insane! I can't even fathom how well drawn this is. Like, even when you get to see Thorfinn get beat up and like bloodied to a pulp, and he shows up to talk to Prince Canute after the second arc, and you're like, can you almost feel how brutally beaten he is and what he looks like? He's just terrible or even when you get to see Asklad finally snap and cut the king's head off like these moments are insane My, like I can't even tell you guys how great this series is in every single way the art is on another effing level I know I said the f word so many times but I'm trying to calm it down you know I'm trying to be more family friendly even though I already dropped the f-bomb three times but as the series goes on, so many more characters get introduced. I believe Helga's her name. Maybe that's not her name. What's the girl who has Hilda who gets introduced, which is one of my favorite characters in this entire story now that she's first got introduced. I need to catch up to the rest of it. I'm only like two volumes behind the actual like English volume. So I believe there's four within those. So I'm four volumes behind. But man, does this series do everything right from the characters to the story to the action is all drawn so well when we first see Thorfinn's father die Thor my god is that scene imprinted in my mind and I'm sure everybody else who's read that because it is done in such a clear and deep emotional way that you can just feel that scene and is absolutely insane but without further ado we have to get to number one so, um, extra honorable mention time, your boy forgot to put Blades the Immortal on the list because he forgot the series existed. My bad. Lynch him! Lynch him from the highest heights! I'm sorry, everybody, I'm sorry. Man, like, I'm gonna, you know, I was wrong, I messed up. It would have made the top 10 if I remembered the series existed. Bryce made an oopsie. I'm sorry. But enjoy the rest of the list. Enjoy number one. I'm sorry that I forgot, but please don't hate me too much. I love you all. Goodbye. Kisses. For number one, there's only one series that can be on the top, be the best. And that is without a doubt. 
Vagabond by Takahiko Inoue. And now this series, you don't even have to read this series to know that it is the best art in all of manga. Without a doubt, the intensity of these scenes are on another level and they are so clearly and visibly well known. My god, are they on another level. I love it so much. There's so much clearly intense from the characters faces to the art that goes around the scenes to nature to just the intensity of his moves everything in this manga is top tier every single thing is done to perfection too bad you're never gonna get to see the end of it you punks ha <laughs> he's just gonna go back to working on real which is also another fantastically drawn manga and also slam junk was too like this dude is good at every single thing he does especially on the art even the story does he do a fantastic story not only vagabond but also real and slam dunk top tier stories alone like when you just see hit after hit that he does my god does vagabond have to be number one because this samurai drama is insane on every single level it does so many things right it is drawn clearly Oh my god, it is done so well. And the fights, my god, the fights are amazing. And even like the nature shots that like you have him at one scene where he's standing on top of a rock, peering over the scene. My god, is it amazing. And without a doubt, Vagamon has to be number one. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate you guys watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me down below the series that I missed because I'm sure that I missed a series and it probably was better than some of the stuff that was in here. But man, I probably just forgot because i didn't think about it at the time and i'm sorry if i missed a series that was one of your favorites and deserved to be in here i don't mean to do it but i'm only human and i'm a one-man crew so i make mistakes but anyway guys thank you so much for watching i always appreciate you guys supporting this please make sure to like comment subscribe if you feel that i deserved it but without further ado i will see you in another video